Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a basic multiple choice test. So I like to build my tests under course management. In my course tools uh, menu, you go down to test surveys and pools, click tests, and we're going to build test. Basic multiple choice test. It's like I've done this before. Whoops, there we go. And in the description and instructions, I like to put the same text. So this way students get the same information in two places and kind of reiterates it for them. So I will put information like um, type of questions so they know whether they're open ended or multiple choice. Uh, in this case, it would be easy. You tell them it's a multiple choice test. Um, how many attempts? Uh, instructors may give multiple attempts. Some instructors say one and done. It's a good idea to prepare students so they know that maybe this is the only shot they have. If they have another class who, you know, they're able to take the test two or three times, they not, may not be as focused on that first attempt. Um, and the time limit. Um, some instructors do a specific time that's just limited to the class. Some instructors um, will have a very large time limit. So we need to let the students know what they're kind of up against. Um, I will also tell people laptop or desktop computer. Um, a mobile device will work when taking a test. We've just found a lot less errors and a lot dis less discrepancies. So we have how many type, uh, what type of question, how many attempts, time limit, um, and also, you know, let them know, good luck. So I like to put these in bullet points and then copy and paste them into the instructions as well. So this way the student knows what they're up against. Let's go ahead and hit submit. And now we're going to go to create question. Uh, this is our test canvas. Um, so create question. You can see there's tons of types of questions. Um, the most popular are true or false, multiple choice, multiple answer. Next, I would say is essay and file response for uh, types of tests or test questions that are more word based. And you can mix it up. You don't have to have all just one type of question. You can do uh, 15 multiple, multiple choice questions and then five short essays, however you'd like. There's a lot of flexibility. So I'm going to click multiple choice. And then here we're going to have a form for our question and each of our choices. All right, so I'm going to give a real simple question. What color is the sky? OK, so let's put a couple different options. We have green. We have blue. Um, let's do brown. And let's do purple. So most people would say that when you ask what color is the sky, it's blue. So then you would click the dot next to the correct answer so the system knows what the correct answer is. All right, so then we have our question set up. We have our question up here, and we have each of our choices it filled out, and then we have our dot selected for the correct answer. So if I wanted to create another multiple choice question, I would click Submit and Create, and it brings us back to a blank page like this, so we can create another multiple choice question. If you wanted to change question types or you were done with creating your questions, you hit Submit, and then we could see our questions, and you can see which one's the correct one. If you decided, oh wait, this, this one's incorrect, you can click Edit, go select another option. All right, let's say it's green this time. All right, hit submit. And you can do that after a test is deployed. So if you find that an answer accidentally got programmed incorrectly, you can go in and edit that, at that uh, multiple choice and it'll update all of the attempts on the test by your students. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, once we have our questions, you wanna add points. So if this were the only question on my test, I would probably put it at 100 points for the one question and hit submit. But let's say I'm going to add four more questions and my test is like one point and we only have five questions. It's going to be something really simple. I can select all, put five and update. And now we see that all the questions would have the same amount of points. Okay, so let's say, and you can do that for as many points. I also find it easy. So if you do have a couple questions that are worth more, but the majority of them are that, use the all points update method and then just go in and manually change those one, those particular questions that are worth more. 
All right, so here we can see that we have one question. This will show you the total of questions you have and the total points that the test is worth. And this will help you add up to whatever score you're looking for. Now that we have our test, we can go and place it in the course. Um, if you leave the test down here under course management, no student will be able to access it. They just won't get it. So let's go to our content area. I'm going to put it in week one. And I'm going to hover over assessment test. And here we have our test. So that's the one I want. I'm going to select it and hit submit. And here's where we have all these options about how you want it displayed. So you want to click off show test description and show instructions. Those are both very important. Um, if you are ready to program the test with a specific availability or you plan on making it available to your students, you want to click yes. If you're not ready to program the availability, leave it no so it's hidden from students. If this is left as no and you program availability, this will override that availability. So if you're ready to program it and you know when you're going to release it to your students, make sure this is clicked as yes. You can allow multiple attempts. So a lot of people will do two or three attempts just to give students a second shot, um, just in case maybe something in uh, internet connectivity went down or just to give them a second shot at it. Um, a lot of major exams will say, nope, one and done. When I do multiple attempts, excuse me, I hit highest grade. Um, if you don't have multiple attempts, you just leave that blank. Click off set timer to set a timer, and then you can add as much time as you'd like. Well, we have a very short quiz, so I think they only need like 10 minutes for that one, but you can set the pace and time as much as you want. Um, for a basic multiple choice or true or false based test, I would say two to three minutes tops for each question. All right, so here's where we set our availability. We can click off display after, and I'm going to have this released first thing Monday morning, so that's midnight of the 28th. And then I'm going to have it available till Friday end of day. All right. Now a lot of uh, live online instructors are having these tests being available when students have class time and you may not always have you know 12, 1230, that sort of thing. So you would have to manually type this in. So let's say your class starts at 945. 945 capital A capital M. Not 19, 945. There we go. All right, and that time will register. So this way you can select a time that's not necessarily pre-programmed. All right, ignore password. We don't really use that for a normal test. Um, if you have any students that need extra time, here's where you'll program that. You can click add user, select a student, and provide them additional time. So I'm gonna give him time and a half. There you go. You can also do availability exception. Um, let's say the student misses the class time. Set up a time for them, and this will allow only that student access to the test. All right, let's give a due date. Um, while you may have the due date listed in a few different places, it's always good to still list it here because this will show up on their dashboard and their calendar in Blackboard, um, and it'll give them a little reminder that they have a test due. All right, and here's where we show the feedback. A lot of people like after the due date, so once the students have all taken the test, then you can release their grades. You can also show them the answers they got correct, the ones they submitted, and also which ones they got incorrect. And these are all just options. Um, you also have the ability to select the presentation. You can have all of your questions on one screen. I like to do one at a time because this way the student can focus up that one question at a time. And I like to randomize my questions so each student gets a different order for each test. Um, this helps with academic integrity a little bit. Um, and But one thing to consider, if your questions have a specific order, if they refer back to another question, you do not want to randomize things because then they'll be out of order and it might be confusing to your students. So once we have all of our uh, settings set up, let's go ahead and hit submit. And let's scroll down and we will see our basic multiple choice test. So here we'll see that it's hidden from students and it'll be available on September 28th at 9.45 a.m. All right, so you're good to go. If you do need to edit these, any of these options, you can go straight to the test, click edit. If you want to edit the test itself, you click edit the test and we have our test uh, canvas. Now I'm going to go back to the test. 
But also, if you want to edit those, those options, so let's say something comes up and you have to push the test back a day, edit the test options will bring you back to all of these options and you can edit things. Okay, so I'm going to hit submit and that is how you make a basic multiple choice test.